everybody, this is Tony. And this is Paul. We're coming at you from the Friends for Life podcast, where we discuss the ongoing lives and issues of people with developmental disabilities to spark positive change in the field. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Making sure that individuals are reaching the goals they have set for themselves. That's one of the many goals of Assured Health Services. If you're looking for a residential care provider or searching for ADS services, Assured Health is your go-to place. Assured Health, helping others succeed. Learn more at assuredhealthohio.com or call 419-442-8066. All right, Shalia, welcome to the Friends for Life podcast. Thank it's you. great to be here at TechFest, yes. learning about a bunch of new adaptive technologies for people. So, how did you get involved in the IDD field? Yes. So, actually, um, I spent my entire life, my entire career, uh, working in the human services field. And I worked specifically in the ID sector. And I did a lot of uh, different types of jobs. I was a caseworker, I supervised group homes. And then for about 10 years, I had the privilege of being able to work for a large provider and do uh, technology-focused work for them. Okay. And so during that time, um, you know, it kind of became apparent that there was a lot of need, not just for tech and assistive tech for people with neuro differences and physical differences, but also sustainability um, processes, you know. So, so there's a lot of availability now of tech, but the idea of keeping it up to date, keeping it customized... Uh, having availability of people uh, to be there to actively train and then be available for concerns and questions and things that aren't working properly uh, was very important. And so that's how LumaCare got started. Awesome. So what does LumaCare offer to individuals yeah. with disabilities? Yeah. So so for uh, what we're working on and that we're, what we're talking about today at TechFest um, is that our assistive technology offerings. And so we have assistive technology professionals on our staff, and what they do is a very comprehensive assessment of a person, what their goals are, what they would like to accomplish, and then we pair them with technologies that would help them be independent and, and work towards that, those goals. Okay. Um, in addition to that, uh, my team, everybody on my team, it's, it's a requirement when you come to LumaCare that you have experience in human services because mm -hmm. I want people to be able to work with our customers directly, work with their families and their teams. Um, so, so we help doing that along the way, um, setting up equipment, making sure that it's useful out of the box to them. And then the third part of that is that we offer training and support so that people can have that continuum of care and have a connection with us, again, both actively doing trainings and then passively when there are concerns with the tech so that it stays up to date and useful for them. So it sounds almost to me as if, um, because for one, I love the human services as, yeah. as point. Um, I don't think you, you can do what we do until you understand that we are dealing with humans. That's right. <laughs> and yes. um, the same way that we were taught when we were younger, treat people how you want to be treated, all yeah. those common um, sayings. Have you had any, like, situations in which people are not thinking that? They're just thinking, hey, we just need technology in here. It's like... Yes. We don't want to have people here anymore. Like, yeah. How do you... How does your organization handle those kind of situations? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So it, it's about marrying the two, mm -hmm. right? So so we know that, you know, a lot of the other things that LumaCare offers really focuses on the depleting workforce for mm -hmm. providers um, and the fact that there aren't enough people to do direct care and help with people maybe who have residential uh, needs right. um, or some type of in-home need. And so, uh, you know, when I when I think about that, uh, we're always going to have people involved. That's mm -hmm. that's the the crux of care. Uh, but when you add technology and you you know you kind of elevate what's able to occur for somebody and how independent they can be, mm -hmm. that's kind of like the secret sauce right. uh, to get the answer for them. So yeah, we'll never take the people out of tech. The, the tech is actually useless without people. So. <laughs> <laughs> to have a lot of people around point. who know what's going on, who support the use of technology, mm -hmm. um, you know, in addition to the person who's receiving the service. Right. How have you seen technology change people's lives? Because, I mean, I know it's changed all yeah. of our lives yes. in one way or another, but especially in the IDD field, I'm sure it's more useful than just playing video games. Oh, and yes. <laughs> zoning out, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yes. I mean, the entertainment factor and all of those things are, are wonderful, and that helps people stay connected, too. Mm -hmm. However, uh, what what we see, the, the kind of reward and in independence 
um, is amazing. You know, it can be uh, something that others would consider simple. Uh, maybe somebody being able to utilize um, an, an augmented communication app and order food for themselves at a restaurant for the first time. You know, yeah. we've had many stories like that where people always had somebody who understood their type of communication able to order for them, but they could actually, in their own words, do those do types of things. Mm -hmm. um, and in that way, foster different relationships in the community. We have lots of stories like that. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a, a woman who is a customer of ours who actually uh, did beauty pageants, and, and she used her uh, communication device to speak to the crowd about wow. people with uh, neurodifferences so that she could raise awareness while she was doing that activity. Um, also a gentleman who, you know, had physical differences and, and wasn't able to work functionally in his home, but he had a work from home job. Mm. So getting some adaptive pieces and kind of some newer types of tech that helped him to be able to flourish and, and be independent with his job. Um, you know, all, all of those wonderful things that we hear. So, so last few years have been different for a lot of people for a multitude of reasons. Yes. I've noticed that there went this switch from everything having to be in person all the time, meetings, mm -hmm. yes. everything was always, you had to drive somewhere, be there. Do you think that the that shift that we've gone through over the last few years, more technology-based shift, has been beneficial to people with disabilities? Because I've found it great. I don't have to drive to the office and have to <laughs> yeah. all the time. <laughs> yes, and, and I think when, you know, we... Uh, LumaCare came to be in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of thinking to do, right? Do you yes. design a company and services kind of the way it was in the old times? Mm -hmm. Or do we think about how the future is going to be? And so our company is completely remote. And all of the interaction that we have with our customers for assistive technology services is done remotely. Um, and we've we've gotten a great response. Uh, we didn't know what to expect, right? Because a lot of folks who receive services traditionally are used to someone coming to their home interacting with them personally, having mm -hmm. meetings, all of those things. Um, but I think, you know, the pandemic, if, it, if there was one positive thing about it, it was able to get people kind of accustomed to this is another way to communicate and it can be done effectively. So my team, you know, is all over the country yes. and, uh, you know, has the expertise, but they're able to talk to anybody on a HIPAA compliant portal mm -hmm. and do trainings and have meetings and, you know, help people accomplish their goals. And it's also, I think, less intrusive too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got people who are very busy um, and their support networks are very busy and we want to be a part of that. We don't want to be an intrusion um, or, you know, kind of something extra. We want to be kind of a part of their lives and, and fit in where it makes sense so that we can help people be successful. The Reliable Drug and Alcohol Testing Clinic is a leading provider and convenient source of pre-employment and occupational type testing. Their clinic provides services to a wide range of private businesses, healthcare facilities, and municipal and county courts. Reliable is an independent, locally owned clinic. As a result, they provide their services at a lower cost than the major hospitals, have faster turnaround times on test results, and eliminate the long waits typically incurred at these larger facilities. To learn more, visit ReliableDrugTest.com. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of tech innovation um, just in my own life. Yeah. <laughs> so what have you seen that is just like mind boggling to you that you never thought that you could see a tech solution for? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that sticks in, sticks out? Oh, there's many things, um, you know, but when I when I think about seeing things in action for the folks that we support, right, mm -hmm. there, there's there's several different things. We have, uh, LumaCare has a partnership in Tennessee with a company uh, called AbleLink okay. and uh, AbleLink Smart Living Solutions. And they have been phenomenal in the types of services that they have. Uh, they have developers that uh, have developed technology specifically for uh, people with cognitive differences. And so a lot of tech around people being able to go into the community and be independent with their job when before they would need to have a job coach, right? That's a dwindling service as well that often comes up when we're talking to customers and their needs. Um, you know, we also uh, work and are partnering with a wonderful company in Canada called Awake Labs. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a solution that actually uh, is software that goes on a wearable. And what okay. it does is it detects strong emotion. Wow. So, yes, it's amazing. So Don't let my wife hear this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody's, you know, not able or not 
wanting to, doesn't quite know how to articulate uh, maybe some strong emotion that they're having that can really help a caregiver, a provider, um, you know, with their consent, uh, being mm-hmm. able to see that and, and maybe help intervene and, and also see patterns over time for somebody yes. and help better support them. So D- that, Now, will that also record the information or is it just it does. Like, it does. Yes. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Yeah. That, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, this is why we so want to take fast, baby. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the, even since last year when we were here at TechFest, I've seen a huge boom in AI technology. Yes. Just mm-hmm. at, even at the consumer level, like my email finishes its sentences for me, yes, which is weird and cool. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going to complain about it. Yeah. Uh, have you seen AI or do you think that AI is going to be a big component of what you're doing? In Absolutely. The yeah. So, so LumaCare is actually actively working on a solution uh, to help providers in the direct support uh, field uh, mm-hmm. with that kind of crisis that they're having and not being able to fill those positions. And the flip side of that is also having a lot of people who could have more independence and perhaps yeah. had had in home care for a long period of time mm-hmm. when other solutions weren't available. So we are having AI be part of that solution. Um, you know, I think it's it's a very exciting um, piece that's going to be part of all of our lives, not just uh, in the IDD sector. But I think it's very important to include those up and coming components um, so that something can be really robust and really useful to somebody mm-hmm. um, and, and have those features like anticipating what someone's need is going to be. Um, you know, that's very important. Yeah, especially uh, like one of the applications I can see is someone with a quote unquote behavioral or how they show their feelings yes. might be physical or with certain type of verbiage that's not the best for us and to have technology that'll warn you prior to and then be able to like combat that in a in a safe respectful way absolutely well beforehand without medication yes you, you look every every bit of that i believe is winning yeah <laughs> i do too i do too yes i think those things are great yeah and i've i've noticed even with ai technology that it's really cool because like for instance, I work in a creative field mm-hmm. and I'm constantly, I was trying to describe my job to somebody the other day. I was yeah. like, it's going into a situation with nothing and just creating yes. something out of thin air. Yes. And that takes a lot of, you know, mental, you just have to constantly mm-hmm. be on your toes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get stuck in these spots and you're yeah. like, I could go to AI on the internet and be like, I need to write a thing about this. That's right. And my brain is dead. Can you like give me a general idea? And then you're like, oh, and it and starts it will. a new idea. <laughs> yes. yeah. And it's, it's kind of scary, but kind yeah. of awesome at the same time. Yeah. Um, are you working on any big projects right now at LumaCare that you're really excited about? Because we always are all working on big Great. projects. Yes. <laughs> but anything specific that you're Yeah, really- absolutely. So, so uh, two things. So the first that I was just talking about uh, in regards to a solution uh, for providers that's mm-hmm. close to my heart because I spent you know most of my career working mm-hmm. with a provider, um, being able to assist with a solution uh, that incorporates AI, that incorporates remote staff that can assist somebody to be more independent, um, and doing that in a fashion that still allows you to uh, render human service is very important to me, right? I feel like kind of when we talk about technology, that human piece gets left out of it. And as we talked about, (laughs) it'll always be there. It's very important. Mm -hmm. So being able to have a system where a remote person can connect with somebody just as they would in person, that's what we're working towards, and that's very exciting to me. That's good. Uh, LumaCare also has a uh, remote care center solution that we Mm -hmm. currently have uh, with a very large provider, and that is, that's, you know, kind of the same idea. Uh, you know, we have providers that have a lot of medical services and people kind of driving around a lot of in-person uh, care, which is wonderful. But mm-hmm. then there's also a lot of gaps in that as well. Yeah. And, you know, the nursing um, shortages, they mirror mm-hmm. what's going on in direct support. Definitely. So uh, having a solution for that, we're able to help providers uh, with a solution, with a dashboard solution. So providing that and the technology providing project management and oversight and taking their nursing resources and creating a 25 or a 24 seven center uh, so that yes. people can call in, they can talk about non-emergency issues. Mm-hmm. They can do a HIPAA compliant video call. Uh, you know, they can also monitor any type of critical health concerns. So we have Definitely. blood pressure and pulse ox, uh, you know, flowing into that system. So all of those things can be addressed in real time by registered nurses at a provider's location, um, and, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, yes. when you have a when you have a big provider and a lot of people, you want quality uh, and mm-hmm. timeliness, and so that's a really exciting solution that we're looking to expand. That is really awesome. We yes. love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, I'm always looking for 
the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I don't know if this is appropriate or not to say, but I think what you all are doing is the next big thing. Thank you. So I, I, so. I, I am so, I'm, because I, 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 I live in this world where everyone's scared of AI right now. Yes. And I, I, I get it. I watched Terminator <laughs> as well. But I also agree with the fact that we are the ones creating these things. So yes. we should at least at bare minimum put in firewalls. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but then, then secondly, let's utilize them the best way we can instead right. of just being idiotic. Um, sorry if the terminology doesn't fit everyone boat, but like I got to call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, this is an A plus in my book. And so far you're getting one of the best, you get the gold star for <laughs> technology. <Thank you. laughs> well, I, I, it's funny too, because two years ago we were having the same con uh, conversation about remote supports and now mm -hmm. like nobody's having that conversation. That's right. It's all about yeah. AI now. And I it's know. like, <laughs> you know, it's just continually shifting and, yeah. you know, next year's Tech Fest will probably be having a different conversation about a new It's going to be a full-fledged robot. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah, and we, I, I think we owe it to the people that we are are trying to support and help to keep up with the times, yeah. right? I think traditionally they, it's, they've always been behind when it comes to technology. Yes. And so now we want to look to the future and see what's available and use that to help mm. provide support. So The DD field exciting. has killed so many trees <laughs> so much paperwork <laughs> yeah we don't want to do that anymore no, no. we need to stop <laughs> well Celia thank you so much for stopping thank in for and talking me. with us We're, it. it's really interesting I hope you know people listening can get something out of this if they, if they want to you know look up Lumicare and, and learn more about what you do and, and maybe get involved and get some services from you guys where sure. can they find you yes so we are our website is lumicaretech.com okay. um, and you can look us up and, and there's a contact information on there so we would be happy to hear from anybody all right thank you very yeah, much thank, thank you, you. Both. THS Remote Supports is clearly focused on improving independent living through dynamic and personalized services. Their systems have been carefully developed and perfected to ensure that everyone receives the best care through the least intrusive means possible. Located in Cincinnati, Ohio, they've spent over 20 years providing in-home supports to individuals with disabilities. If you or someone you know is looking for a remote service provider, go to thsrss.com or call 513-882-9088.